welcome friend. Have a seat by the fire. Make yourself comfortable. In place of the pines on the sides of the trail were numerous scarecrows on poles, and out on the tip of the peninsula was a shack made of sticks and mud and brambles. After pausing to suck in some deep breaths, Ellen discovered on closer examination that it wasn't scarecrows bordering her path after all. It was people. Dead people. She could smell them. You're listening to Campfire Radio Theater. Tonight we have a most special treat in store. From the wildly imaginative mind of acclaimed author Joe R. Lansdale comes a gritty tale of suspense and raw terror. Of course, earbuds are recommended for maximum stereophonic dread. Our tale is called Incident On and Off a mountain road. Bruce used to always say, people can come into these mountains and just disappear. These hills will consume you without the proper skills. That was his mantra. <laughs> Funny thing. I just assumed it was an implied threat on his part, or one of his many paranoid delusions, but maybe he had a point. I'm running, just like I planned, and I'm never going back, never setting foot back in that cabin. I know, Mom. I know. I gave him every opportunity to change. Hell, I even tried to become what he wanted me to be. His little backwards housewife. I told you he wasn't right for you, Ellen. <laughs> it's just... If it wasn't for the whole survivalist thing and preparing for the end of the world, all the macho insanity, I thought he might... I don't know... Maybe come to his senses at some point. No, 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 no. He had no business moving you to the mountains in the middle of nowhere, Ellen. I mean, what kind of life is that for you? Yeah, I just... Are you okay? I just need a little time to clear my head. Look, I just... just come on, come on, any time, dear, okay? There's always open... Hey, Mom. Okay. Listen, Mom, you're, you're breaking up. I may lose you through here. Going too fast in these curves anyway, so let me... Oh, shit! Didn't spot the other car until it was too late. It was just sitting there in the middle of the road as I came barreling around the curve. I block out for maybe a minute or two. Then the damnedest thing happens. Ellen. Ellen. <gasps> what? Uh, what's happening? You came around the curve too fast. Uh, Smashed into that SUV. Uh, what did I always tell you about distracted driving? Oh, Christ! Jesus. Oh, God. What, what a disaster. Where's the driver? There's no one here. Why was it parked in the road? You got two eyes, Ellen. Observe what's right in front of you. There's blood. Dear God. Lots of it. Leading off toward that guardrail. Now someone's hurt. That is quite a drop. 
If they're injured, why crawl over a railing into that wilderness? Think about it, Bright Eyes. Someone dragged them. Someone dragged them down there? Bingo. That doesn't make any sense. Is that a trail leading down? Oh my god. Are you okay? Hold on. I'll call for help. Forget it, Ellen. Your phone's smashed back in the car. Someone's moving down there. Well, he doesn't look very friendly. You're suspicious of everyone. Look at him. Are you injured? Christ, I'm a cracker. Is that a man or a tree trunk? I'm the one who ran into your car. Are you all right? Was there someone with you? I heard a woman. Check out that pale bastard. You know inbreds live out here, right? Do you need a hand? Back away, Ellen. Ellen, back away. The man that emerges from the woods is something out of a nightmare. Oh my god. He is gonna gut you like fresh trout. Oh my god. It's time to run, Ellen. Run, goddammit. Jump over the railing into the woods. Get easy. Deep breaths. Find your center. Get out of my head, you son of a bitch. You need me. <laughs> I need you? You're not my only hope, Obi-Wan. That's right. You need me right now more than ever. You're just some figment of my imagination. I must have really bumped my head back there. Oh, yeah? Well, how about that big moon-faced bastard with the knife? You know, the one that tried to slice and dice you. He a figment of your imagination, too. Shit, I'm all scraped up. Sliding down the hill hurt like a mother. Quiet. He's close. Coming down the trail. Don't move a muscle. He's moving off. Don't be so sure. Maybe I can make it back to the car. I mean, it's damaged, but I think it's still drivable. Why don't you come back to me, Alan? I'm never coming back to you, Bruce. It's not unusual for me to hear Bruce's words ringing in my head. That self-righteous wisdom his nutty, survivalist crap. If you've been with someone long, they can't help but rub off on you. Right? But this is different. It's like he's with me every step. But I'm all alone. I risk poking my head out for a moment through the pines, peering down the trail. I don't spot him at first. He's standing too still, frozen. But he sees me. Dear God, I know he does. The moonlight is too bright for him not to. <laughs> Shit. I lunge back into the undergrowth. The trees grow dense, and quickly I'm blocked by a low-hanging limb. <laughs> Moonface is right behind me. Christ, he's quick for such a brute. I crouch down, parting the brush just enough to keep moving. I can't see what's in front of me, and I don't care. It's gotta be infinitely better than the fate that waits behind. I lose my footing and dangle over a deep, dark ravine with only a limb to support my weight. My grip is slipping. Smart move, Veronica. Now you're trapped. 
That beast is hovering directly over me, silver teeth glistening in the moonlight. He's climbing down after me. What kind of savage am I dealing with? I see the moon, and the moon sees me. Must be rushing water far below, but it's too dark to see. He's only inches away now. Close enough to nearly snatch me up. Maybe seconds left. He reaches for my limb to steady himself. Oh, he looks so damn pleased. Only hurts for a second, sissy. I release the limb and it springs back, smacking him full in the face. I plunge and hit the water hard. The cold water nearly takes my breath away. Mountain rapids are frigid nearly year-round. A current sweeps me downstream, and I let it carry me. Relieved just to be alive. I stagger to the bank, maybe a hundred yards downstream, but my clothes are soaked. I won't last long like this out here. Hypothermia kicking in. Oh my god! You're the one from the SUV? Back on the road? He's not human. He's a monster. He killed my husband. And he killed him right in front of me. I'm so sorry. Cutting and slicing. Blood. There was so much of it. Shh. Calm down. There's a water bottle in my purse. Can you grab it? Should be laying right there. Sure, I see it. Just one second. I can't feel my life. Hold on, it's gonna be okay. I can't feel anything anymore. Here, here you go. You want me to open it for you? Hey, here's your. Water. God damn it. Better save it for yourself. She's not gonna need it. I don't get it. I finally escaped from you, Bruce, and now there's another maniac trying to kill me. Escape. <laughs> I'll always be with you, Ellen. You know, me and you. We got a connection. Besides, I'll never hurt you. You did hurt me, Bruce. You did hurt me. Let me tell you something, dearest. One reason you're still alive, and that's because of skills I taught you. Oh, right. I'm sure you take on this freak with bare hands. Mano a mano, right on the top of the mountain. I've got a concealed carry, sweetheart. I just put four rounds of hollow point through him and call it a day. <sighs> Stupid macho bastard. Look, all I ever wanted was for you to be ready, you know? Like when it all goes to hell in a handbasket and borders and governments don't count for jack shit. Someday, somebody's gonna push a button, start a war. That fight's gonna spill into the streets, and only the individualist, well-armed, well-trained, and strong of mind, strong of body, will survive. You're insane! Well, taught you how to survive, didn't I? That's why you're still standing. And she is a worm buffet. You're gonna freeze out here, honey. 
<laughs> what did I always tell you? Rule number one in a survival scenario. Take advantage of what's at hand. Um, I think she's about my size. I slip out of my wet clothes. The dead woman's outfit is bloody, but at least it's mostly dry and she has a jacket. It'll help me warm up. I dig through her purse. Not much useful inside. I do find an energy bar, a Slim Jim. I can use the nourishment after such a physical workout. Mm. What else? Makeup, a nail file, breath mints, a lighter. Smoking will kill you. That's not very funny. I put the lighter away in my pocket. Digging further, I find a tiny pair of scissors. Not much to them, but they're sharp. He's got to come back for the body. This is the spot. It's time to make your stand. At this point, I stop questioning why my subconscious speaks with the voice of my estranged husband and just go with it. Hell, none of this makes sense anyway. This should do. It's straight. Sturdy. Not bad. Not bad. Fashioning a spear. Now... Mount the scissors on the end, then tie it with your panties. Shut up, Bruce. Tight as you can. I know what I'm doing. No, that's good. Excellent. You might just MacGyver your way out of this yet. He's coming. Moonface. I hide behind a tree a few yards away from the body. No time to take a few practice tosses with the spear. I'll have only one chance. You can see wheels turning in that big brute's head. He's wondering, who disturbed this body? Where did her clothes go? He's got sharp senses, this one. Refined. I wonder if he smells you, Ellen. Perhaps a faint remnant of Victoria's secret perfume. Or maybe it's his hearing. He's bound to hear your heart beating out of your chest. You got one shot, Ellen. Aim for an eye. You can end this right here. It's all in your hands. I clutch the spear tightly. Slowly gaze around the tree. And I see Moonface approach. Still unaware of my position, but... I feel he senses my presence somehow. I target him. Holding the spear ready. And closer closer he comes. Damn it! Not the fatal blow I hoped for, but it did stick him in the neck. Nothing to do now but run. Run and hope he's too stunned to follow. I find my way back to the trail, keep a steady pace. I had hoped I was working my way toward the road, but no such luck. I'm headed in the opposite direction. Oddly, there are scarecrows lining the sides of the trail, leading into an open field with tall grass. Scarecrows and a sickening smell. Hey, Bright Eyes. Those aren't scarecrows. They're people. His kills hung like rotting trophies. Dozens of them. Crows peck away at what flesh remains, and the moon hangs high, its silver-blue light shining right through their eye sockets. Right through the holes bored clean to the back of their skulls. Get a load of that guy. Still wearing his UPS uniform. They're all like just... Poor souls who were passing through. Jesus, some of them are children. Better use your wits, lady. You're gonna join them. I'm coming up on an old shack nestled on the edge of a sheer cliff. It looks to be perched right on the side of the mountain. Its windows flicker with candlelight. 
He has me cornered here. Tactical 101, if you can't effect escape, fall back and fight with whatever's available to you. I break into a dead dash for the cabin. Maybe there's something I can fight with. I'm sick of running. A smell of decaying corpses hits me before I even pass through the open door. What greets me is unspeakable. A madman's workshop for displaying the dead. I've stepped into a devil's den. If this guy's a taxidermist, he sucks. My stomach churns as I survey the single room shack. Staring at me from the center of the room is a woman seated at a card table, flesh rotting and dripping off her skull like candle wax. Her eyes empty with holes in the back of her head, same as the others hanging outside. Her decrepit hand clamped around a bottle of whiskey. Well, I guess Old Moonface fancies himself an artist. Only he works in a very different media. The rest is just... too horrible to describe. All right, pop quiz. There are things in this room that can save your hide. Question. Can you find them in time? He's coming up the trail now. I can see him. No hurry, just taking his time. He knows I'm trapped. I'm trapped to here. Focus, Ellen. Uh, uh, all right, okay, there are tools here. What can be used as a weapon? There's gotta be something. A frying pan, cast iron, heavy, a lead pipe. If I can get close enough, maybe I can cave in his skull. Mm, better come up with a backup plan. You don't want to risk close quarters combat with this freak. Wait a minute. Shit, I don't see him. Where did he go? He's baiting you. Or maybe I hit him better than I thought. That neck wound. Maybe he collapsed from blood loss. I peer out into the night, clutching the pan. There's no one in sight. Only the shining moon above and grass waving in a light breeze. <laughs> Moonface rips me from the doorway, slings me into a table. He must have come from behind through a hidden entrance. I scramble for cover as he looms closer. His knife shines in the shadows. I can see him fully now, only a few feet away. I see the moon, and the moon sees me. God bless the moon, and God bless me. You don't really want to do this, do you? He got me near the shoulder. Don't need stitches, but that's the least of my worries. I maneuver the table between us. If I could just make it to the door, but he's bolted it closed. I grab the whiskey bottle from the corpse. It shatters against his forehead and spills down his ragged coat. I make a run for the door, but he quickly blocks my path with a few quick steps. <laughs> At this point, it's a free-for-all. Reminds me of my tussles with Bruce. I fight with everything I have, but I know he'll overpower me. Soon he has a hand around my throat, and I feel the breath slipping from me. Moonface holds the shining blade dangerously close to my face. No, Sissy. Let's open up that pretty head. Let the night shine in. <laughs> I give up. There's nothing to do now but let him carve me into one of his hollow eyed scarecrows. Ellen. Ellen. Always take advantage of what's at hand. That lighter from the woman's purse. I fish it from my coat pocket. Find just enough strength to light it. Along with his alcohol-drenched sleeve. Moonface ignites like the head of a match. Loses his grip on me and drops the knife. I'm not your sissy. 
I lift the lead pipe from the floor like a Louisville slugger and make like the bases are loaded in the bottom of the ninth. You got him now. No mercy. You sorry, sick murderous piece of shit! I bludgeon him with all the rage I feel toward this monster, towards Bruce. Moonface falls back against the flimsy wall of the hut and smashes through. He plummets like a flaming meteor into a black abyss. Whoever built this hut placed it way too close to the sheer cliff of the mountain. It's a long way down. Come back to me, Alan. Maybe we can work things out. That's what Bruce always said after an argument. Okay, Bruce. Okay. I'm coming back. After a few wrong turns, I find the proper trail. Back to the road. Thank God. pretty harsh. I never even saw it coming. Bruce's dead eyes stare back at me from the trunk of the car. Dull as scratched glass. <laughs> yeah. You taught me well. Sewed me up in a bedsheet while I slept. <laughs> Beat the hell out of me with, what was it, a stick of stove wood? You were so drunk you didn't even stir. Toss me in here like a bag of trash? If it's any consolation, I didn't plan to kill you. I got carried away. Well, that makes it all better. Just wanted to teach you a lesson. Make sure you never laid a hand on me again. I'm your husband. You raped me. Over... And over. You're my wife. Oh, that makes it okay. You bullied me. All your threats and domination. Thought I was weak because I'm just a woman, right? Well, I guess homicide is cheaper than divorce. You had a nasty mean streak. I just wanted to punish you. But when I started... Couldn't stop. Crazy thing is, there's part of me that feels guilty about all this. There's flies on me, Ellen. Stop <laughs> sermonizing and bury me somewhere. I'm not going to bury you, Bruce. That wouldn't fit his pattern. Pattern? What are you talking about? Moonface. His whole M.O. You know, I was just going to tell people you had abandoned me. That you had run off and never come back. It's a weak story, I know, but it's all I had. Until now. It's not that easy hauling a 200-pound carcass. But lucky me, it's mostly downhill. Thank God for cardio. I take a few breathers, but finally manage Bruce onto a seat, back inside the murderer's lair. And there I go to work. Make use of what's at hand. What's at hand. What's at hand. I do. A blood-splattered cordless drill comes in handy, and finally, that terrible blade belonging to Moonface finishes the job. 
I wonder... How much innocent blood has that monster spilt with this knife? I sit back and inspect my handiwork. What? Nothing to say? No critique? Well, thanks for the advice. It got me through. What was it that crazy son of a bitch said? Something about... Letting the light shine in? <laughs> now, when the police find the wrecked SUV and wander down the trail to investigate, they'll find you sitting here, Brucie, with your skull hollowed out and empty eyes, just like all of Moonface's other victims, and it'll all start to fit like a neat little puzzle, you see? No, I don't guess you do, do you? As for Moonface, if they look further, they'll discover the extra crispy perpetrator lying at the bottom of that rocky gorge. Case closed. I find an old shirt and wipe clean each item I have touched. The knife, the drill, each and every surface, leaving not a print, not a trace I've ever been here. I walk back to the road, just as the first strands of daylight appear. And I don't hear my dead husband speak even once. Only now does it feel like he's gone. And for the first time in many years, I'm free. Bruce used to always say people can come into these mountains and just disappear. I assumed it was an implied threat on his part, or one of his many paranoid delusions, but... Maybe he had a point. You've been listening to Campfire Radio Theater. Tonight's tale, Incident On and Off a Mountain Road, was written by Joe R. Lansdale and adapted, produced, and directed for this series by John Ballantyne. Featured in the cast were Blythe Haynes as Ellen, Jack Kincaid as Bruce, Tanya Milevich as the dying woman, Sarah Golding as Ellen's mother, and Owen McEwen as Moonface. Original score by Kevin Hartnell. Additional music by Kevin McLeod and Alan Haworth. Sound design by John Ballantyne. Additional sound, courtesy of Travis Vingroff and Free Sound Project. Mixing and post-production by John Ballantyne. Share the horror and visit us at CampfireRadioTheater.com and on Facebook at Campfire Radio Theater. <laughs>